Hello and hello everyone, my name is Lucy and welcome to Books and Brushes. So today I'm going to talk about the spooky reads I want to read. Now last week I did the spooky reads I recommend to you, like the Halloween books that I think would be really good for you to read at Halloween, that I've read and loved and felt the tension and the fear. But today is about the books that I haven't read that I would like to, so books that pique my fancy for Halloween time. Let's get into the books. The first book I really, really want to read is The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding by Alexandra Bracken. That and the sequel, which is The Last Life of Prince Alistair, I want to say. I really want to read that duology. It sounds just so Halloween-y and just perfect. This book is like kind of a middle grade, I think, about a boy who has a demon living inside of him. His ancestor, his great 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 grandfather or something, made a deal with the devil to bring wealth and riches into his family, but he broke the deal and he is now brought upon this demon for his great 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 grandson to have to deal with. And he has a set amount of time to get rid of this demon before he takes over completely. The demon sounds sassy, the demon sounds tricky and manipulative, and this whole book just screams spooky eggs. Like, cool, middle grade, spooky, and uh, everything about this says Halloween to me, and I think it's going to be such a good one, and I want to read these two books. The reason I haven't got these two books, the hardcover is beautiful, and I want it, but I can only get access to the paperback at the moment, and it's nowhere near as pretty, and I'm like, no! <laughs> so I'm trying to get the hardback, because it's just better. And also, The Last Life of Prince Alistair, that's only just come out. So again, for me, that's really difficult to get a hold of. So this might have to be next Halloween, or even the Halloween after, which sucks. But I will read this, I, I will. I, I really will. And I cannot wait. I'll be totally behind the times, but what's new? The next book I really want to read for Halloween is one I actually own, and that is This Savage Song by Victoria Schwab. Hey look, me and the book match. Now this is one of the books I got from America and I just love the cover, it's so pretty. This book is about two people, a girl who's like a human, wants to be like a ruthless father, she wants to really crack down on the monsters and just be kick ass like a ruler like her dad. She's like an heir, she's got responsibility and the city's kind of crumbling. On the flip side there is a monster who, his father's pretty monstrous, he can steal souls with a song, he, he's cursed and destined to to be evil, but is he? Because he wants to be good. And these two form some kind of alliance and have to work together to save the city. Or something like that. I'm trying to paraphrase the synopsis, but it's something along those lines. And I love that, the whole idea of, you know, the, the good versus evil, nature versus nature, you know, what, you, what you're designed to be and what you really are, all that kind of stuff. That, I love those tropes, I love all those themes, and the music element, kind of that really intrigues me. And it sounds really dark and gritty and evil, and those topics are just perfect subject matter for Halloween. This is spooky, but in a way that I, I think is deep and I'm, like, I love to delve into. I'm not a massive fan of just like horror movies, like, ah, you know, I'm just like, oh wow, something jumped out. Yeah, that, that's scary. I'd rather read something that's deep, you know, that tugs at the core of you. To me, that's more scary and interesting than like kind of just plain horror. That's probably just me, so there's not really many horror books on this list, and that's why. But this just does sound dark and gritty, and that moral good and wrong. That's perfect time for Halloween, and I want to read this. I haven't yet, because I don't have our dark duet. And you know, I'm a marathon reader, I want to read one after the other, and since I don't have the other, I can't read the one. So, I will get to you, I promise. So the next Halloween read that takes my fancy goes on the uh, Victoria Schwab vein still, and that is Vicious and Vengeful. Now, Vicious is about two ambitious and intelligent boys who are like thick as thieves and who go out on this mission to research something they're very passionate about and that's they believe that like near-death experiences and trauma could like trigger extraordinary abilities and they want all the power and that together they're gonna find it but when they do find it things don't go to plan and the two boys kind of turn on each other 
and years later it's a fight between them and the extraordinary people they have in their company. A story of like revenge, who will win and will these two boys spite just destroy each other completely. That's my kind of a rendition of that synopsis. This book sounds so interesting. I love the kind of villain origin story vibe I'm getting from this. I mean everyone loves an origin story, especially if it's a villain's one. It's so interesting to read. I love the, these kind of characters that are ambitious and manipulative. And they sound super interesting to read about. What the extraordinary abilities in the college and the research setting and the, the revenge aspects. It just sounds so interesting and vicious enough to be super Halloween-y. So I'll get to the, this Halloween, uh, that's another matter. <laughs> so the next book I'd love to read is like a horror mystery, which would be perfect for Halloween, and that is Stalking Jack the Ripper, followed by Hunting Prince Dracula and Escaping from Houdini. Now, like kind of most of the books on this list, I've heard so many great things and it sounds just super right for this time of year. So this is about a privileged woman of wealth and, you know, grace. She's supposed to be higher class and has a lot of expectations on her from her strict father and society as a whole because she's a woman. But she has like a secret double life and she sneaks off to her uncle's like laboratory to practice forensic science, which is too gruesome for a lady like her that should be doing. But she isn't gonna let that stop her. This is her passion. She loves forensics and medicine and she is gonna study it. But during her studies, she comes across one of the most notorious serial killers in the UK and that is Jack the Ripper. Still unknown to this day, still a mystery, which is what's fun about it because you can take it and run with it and do what you like because nobody knows the answer. <laughs> he starts hunting down and getting way too close to comfort with Jack the Ripper himself. It just sounds mysterious and creepy and I want to know how close she gets. I want to know how much she's in danger. I want to I wanna know all the things. Sounds really, really good and the main character sounds kick-ass. I'd love to read it for Halloween. It sounds perfect. I'm sorry about the funky lighting today, it was either funky lighting or no video, so I've made the choice to go with video. <laughs> I'm really sorry if it's dark, but I guess it is Halloween. So apparently Victoria Schwab is very Halloween, because I have another one. <laughs> this one is one of her newest release, and that is City of Ghosts. So this book is about a girl who goes through a near-death experience of drowning and gains the ability to pull back the veil, i.e. see the ghosts and the people that are dead because she was so close to being dead herself. She has a best friend who's a ghost, things are already really strange, but her parents decide to host a TV show about the most haunted places in Scotland. And so they up and travel to Edinburgh and go through these castles in the most haunted places. And obviously this is going to have some repercussions for her because she can see the ghosts. And our main character meets another girl who has the same ability and she discovers this whole thing is way more dangerous than just seeing a bunch of ghosts. She realises she has how much she needs to learn about the veil and about herself and about what happened to her and I can't wait to see the fallout from all of this. It sounds so good. Recently I read the book Out of the Blue and that was set in Edinburgh and I absolutely loved the setting of that. I mean, I feel like so many books are set in America or like a sci-fi dystopian world, which used to be America. I feel like when books are set in the UK, there's just something good about it. I relate a lot more to that being from the UK. Harry Potter is the only one I can think of right now that's really London based and like UK based. There's a lot of like new books coming out now that's like Victorian London but like I need more than just Victorian London. I want like a modern British setting. Like is that too much to ask? City of Ghosts, yeah, set in Edinburgh which sounds really really fun. It's a middle grade so it sounds nice and light and I love the idea of this one, the game of ghosts. The idea of going to those castles and graveyards all around Scotland, that just sounds really interesting and fun. People rave so much about Victoria Schwab and I need to jump on that train already, like I am a lagging behind and I just need to read to some Victoria Schwab and City of Ghosts again is Halloweeny. I just think she writes spooky books and this is the time for that and I really am looking forward to reading City Ghost. I think it'll be quick, I think it'll be fun, I think it'll be spooky. The next books I have on my list kind of go together and that is... So classics are one of those things which when you're a reader you're supposed to read classics. Like you're supposed to be interested and enamoured by them. 
but they've never really really interested me. Just because they're classics doesn't mean I have to read and love them. Sorry. <laughs> but recently came across a classic synopsis and it really interested me and I thought that is a story that actually really does interest me. So I looked into it and I found a few classics that just the concept of them really intrigued me and I thought of all the classics these ones are probably the ones I'm going to like the most and I'll give them a go because it's always good to expand your reach and try new things and try and explore your readership so I'm going to try and read these classics who knows what will happen but all three of these classics happen to be very spooky and Halloweeny so maybe that's what I like in a classic maybe just you know Pride and Prejudice don't swing it for me I don't know, I've never read it. So the first one on this list is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This one has always intrigued me to be fair. It seems quite slim and manageable, but this one, I love the idea of the, the ingenious young scientist and his crazed creation. More importantly, the creation itself and his thought process of how he's alive, does he deserve to live, is he a real human, does he have a soul, all of these things. That kind of thought process is what intrigues me, how, what humanity is or deserves to be. And those ideas I love in books anyway, so this was the original like creator of that you could say. This is where that idea came from. That boggles my mind a little and really interests me. As you know, my favourite book is Unwind and there are a lot of those kind of themes, in fact there is a lot of comparison from one of the characters, Camus, to Frankenstein. Cam has a lot of Frankenstein thoughts with these, you know, do I have a soul, am I alive, what makes humanity, who, who can say if you are real, if you are human, if you have a soul, if you exist. That was a play on Frankenstein, which was amazingly cool. But the original, the where it came from, and I think I'd be really interested in this book. I just really hope I love it, because really I've always been intrigued by the story, and yet I've never read it. So it's time to change that, and I mean, what's more Halloween-y than Frankenstein? Yeah, oh wait, that was our first classic of three. Our second one is The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. Now this was the book I mentioned where I come across the synopsis and thought, wow, if that were a modern book, I'd, I'd want to read that in a snap. So it kind of, I've always heard of this one, but I didn't know what it was really about, which is weird. Like Frankenstein, everyone knows what Frankenstein is about, but I've heard of this book, but I didn't know the details. And now I do, I'm like, huh, that actually sounds really interesting. So thank you, Dorian Gray, you're the one that started this. So hopefully you will lead me down a good path. Now this one is about a man who gets his portrait taken. <clears throat> oh, <laughs> you guys know how much I love a book with art in it. But things get sinister where he makes a dreadful kind of wish that his shortcomings and age will appear on the portrait instead of his own face. So instead of him growing old, the portrait will grow old and he will remain the same. But the portrait takes on more than just age, it takes on greed and corruption. Things will start to unravel from there as man's humanity is no longer in himself but in his portrait. I don't know, that whole idea of a portrait taking on his age and his greed and reflecting back at him all the negative things about himself, the visuals of himself that he will never display. And the idea of that, that just sounds so interesting to me. I mean, on the back of this, it says, this is about the tale of appearance, reality, art, life, truth, fiction, and the burden of conscience. All things which really interest me, and the whole idea of the art. I mean, I'm really interested to meet the artist in this and how he deals with this, because that's going to be cool. And I don't know, just the relationship between people and art. That's a topic we don't explore much in books, and I just really want to see what happens. I can't really put it any other way. So I really, really hope this delivers. I read like kind of the first few pages and it looks heavy, like the words are, whew, it's a mouthful. It's not exactly gonna be a smooth read. It's, I'm gonna probably take a long time with it because it's so intellectual, just like every sentence is a vocabulary times a thousand. And I'm like, okay, what did I just read? But I'm hoping to really get in the swing of it. 
and I really hope this book delivers because I love that synopsis idea. Fingers crossed! So the third and final classic is again one that I've always seen from afar and thought that does kind of look interesting. I've seen it more times before and stroked the beautiful cover and during this classic sprint I just decided to get it and see what it's like. And that is The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. Now as far as I know this is about an ingenious doctor, chilling experiments and a rather unruly and vicious companion. This is about split personality and about scientific experiments and how all of that can go dastardly terribly wrong. A tale of murder and dark science. This book even describes it as an instant horror classic. The split personality thing is the thing that really interests me with this. I love the idea again of that ingenious scientist. I love our scientists for some reason. I love what they're able to create and whether they should, whether they can. And the men, all women, behind those minds. I just, I find that so interesting. Plus a split personality and a murderous, devilsome Mr. Hyde, I'm guessing. I'm pretty sure Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde are one person, and that is the split personality, but I'm not 100% sure. And I hope that's the case, because that's going to be super interesting to have a respectable scientist and a murderer in the same like body. It's gonna have a really great conflict. I cannot wait to read it. And will I get to all these classics during this Halloween? Doubtful. Mm, but you know, I can try, I can do my best. Next book on my list is a book I found while perusing on just like good reasons. I was purposely looking for spooky books and somehow I stumbled across the book The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager, I'm gonna say. Now this book seems like a fast-paced action mystery thriller about a girl's first summer at camp away from her parents. She meets friends, she has a good time and she learns how to lie. And three of her friends go into like this forest and they don't come out. And this is something that's played her for years. This mystery has kind of been dead and buried. But years later, she returns to the scene of the crime at this camp because she's invited back to the reopened camp as like a counsellor or something. She thinks maybe she can just get the closure she needed from it and lay this ghost to rest. But instead, she's back in the mystery and will she finally find out what happened and will her lies catch up with her? But right now, I've got no idea whether she did it or not and I wanna know. <laughs> this book sounds really good. I love that mystery thriller element. The camp sounds interesting. I even think she's going back to camp to do like arts and crafts or something as like a teacher, as like an art teacher. I don't know if I made that up, wishful thinking, but I'm pretty sure that was one of the things that drew me to this book because art in books guys, art in books. <laughs> and again, that's just, that was just a complete happy accident as old Bob Rossi would say. Sorry. This book ticks all the boxes, it's not a book I've heard many people talk about so I know nothing about the end result of this about how the reception was to this book, but it intrigues me and I'd love to read it. If it's good, then awesome, I found a new like horror, thriller, mystery author who's written like other books, like there's this one called Final Girls as well, and that could give me some really good Halloween reads and I'm looking forward to them. The next book on my list is one that has been around for a while, has had more cover changes than anything, and that, that scares me, but getting over that, and that is The Diviners by Libba Bray. I've heard about this book for a while and I'm like yeah okay you know the 1920s New York that's kind of cool and I've never really gone beyond that but I've heard it was a perfect Halloween read so I decided to actually you know properly read the synopsis and it sounds really good of course it does you're an idiot Lucy <laughs> this is about a girl and all her friends and the war is over it's time to party after the war before the depression they are gonna have a blast they are living up in New York with jazz and gin and it just sounds super fun and I love that whole vibe anyway. This girl has come from a small town and now she's living it up in New York City and she couldn't be happier until young women start being murdered all across the city and these are pretty gruesome and planned murders and there are the strange goings on. There are tarot cards and there's dark magic mysteries and she may have some secret power to solve this mystery because the police definitely can't. The whole synopsis sounds super interesting to me. I love 
the setting, the idea, that again, the mysteries, I always love like a good thriller mystery on Halloween, and it sounds really, really perfect. Apparently all the books are good, so I'm just gonna have to buy the trilogy, hopefully in a matching set of bloody covers, because <laughs> this series had more cover changes than I've ever bloody seen. But yeah, it just sounds really fun, really dark, and I cannot wait to read this one either. There are so many books, I don't know which ones I'm going to read this Halloween, it's going to be such a hard choice. The next book on my list is a really new release, so who knows when I'll get to it, but that is Grim Lovelies by Megan Shepherd. This book definitely, definitely has an intriguing synopsis and plot. It's about a girl who is not really a human, she was like an animal enchanted to be a human and she's assistant or servant to this witch who enchanted her to be a human as well as other beasties as they're called. So she's not the only one but she's enchanted into existence and she can't really be like a proper human until one day where the witch is murdered and our main character is accused of that crime. And her and the other beasties have to figure out who really murdered the witch before the spell fades and they become animals once more, losing the life they've always dreamt of and the only life they've ever known. And just that whole concept of like these animals turned humans trying to fight for their humanity, that just sounds so, so interesting. This book is set in Paris. A really cool setting. We don't have too many books set in Paris, and I'm looking forward to that setting. But this book just seems dark and like the magic, the dark magic. It's got to be dark magic to make an animal human temporarily, to make them like some kind of human servant from an animal. That's pretty dark, and these animals fighting to stay human, and just the whole idea of this really intrigues me. It sounds really cool, and if written well, this could be an amazing story. Cannot wait to read it. it. Seems like everyone is on the same boat as me right now. A lot of people are kind of hyped for this book even before it's come out, because it just sounds so good, and I'm on board with that because I completely understand that because I'm with them. Like that interests me so much, and I can't wait to see how it all plays out. Next up is one I saw in Waterstones a while ago and I thought about buying and I never did and I kind of wish I did now but we'll see and that is The Truth and Lies of Ella Black by Emily Barr. Now this book as far as I can gather seems about a girl who's living a great life until her family whisk her away and she accidentally uncovers a secret about her parents that they're not hers at all and there is a dark secret in the family. Ella has to run and discover who she really is where she really comes from and discovers more dark secrets about her own parents and her real parents. As far as I gathered from the book, this isn't from the synopsis I've read online, but when I read it in Waterstones, it seemed to hint that Ella had like a, a dual personality and like a dark personality. Again, like the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, I love that split personality idea and I think that would be really fun to see the darker side of the girl with the lighter side I just think that'd be really, really interesting, and I don't know too much about the book. We'll see. I haven't decided yet, but it sounds really interesting, so I've put it on my list, and fingers crossed I can get to some of these books this Halloween. That comes to one last book on my list, and the final one is a new release, and that is Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein. Apparently, it's the 200th anniversary of Frankenstein, so... If there's ever a time to read that classic, it's now. This is a kind of spin-off, newer version of this, and it sounds really interesting, dark, and depraved. This is about a story about Elizabeth, a girl who is malnourished and has a lot of abuse from her caregiver, and she does not lead a good life. Until that is, she manages to worm her way into the Frankenstein family, and will do anything she can to become indispensable to this rich family. And she does, she manages to gain that. She has food on her plate and silks on her body and she is determined to stay there. But that means entertaining lonely yet brilliant little boy named Victor Frankenstein. And she will become his companion. She must survive in Victor Frankenstein's dark depraved ideas and his every whim. Victor's dangerous temper and ideas. The girl has a sweet smile and a calculating heart 
and she will find any way to survive in this world and in this family. Now the whole idea of that sounds super interesting. The orphan on the fringes who manages to worm her way in. She sounds sweet and calculating. I love that combination. And just the idea of her having to watch, be a part of Victor Frankenstein's origins and progression as he goes on to be the Victor Frankenstein that creates Frankenstein's monster. I'm really interested to see how she manages to skirt that line, how she manages to entertain Victor's whims, and does she ever discourage him? Does she go with it? If I love the original idea of Frankenstein, I love this, and I will read it after I've read Frankenstein, I hope. So, fingers crossed, and I just want to get to it because it sounds so, so good. So that is 13 because unlucky dark number. That is the 13 books that I would really love to read in October. Now obviously 13 books in this October, it's not going to happen. We're already like over a week in. There's no way I'm going to read all of these. It's just, it's not possible. But you know, some of these I'll read next October or maybe the October after that. Which is kind of sad because I don't want to wait that long but hopefully I'll get to a good few chunk of these and I'm really really looking forward to them. It's just a matter of which ones I'm more looking forward to, which ones I have easier access to because that plays a big part in it. Some of these I really want to read but I'm not going to buy them if I can't get the cover I want or I don't have the other one in the series so I might not read that yet. We will see how it goes but I just, I, all of those books sound super interesting and I hope they sound interesting to you too. Maybe you've got some own ideas for Halloween reads this year. And you never know, maybe these books or some of these books will be on next year's Halloween rec list. Fingers crossed because I just want to love these so bad. They all sound super good and oh, I just, I'm looking forward to this Halloween. I think it's going to be a really, really good reading month. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you had a spookily delightful time. I post videos every single Wednesday. It would be a lot to me if you would just like the video, comment, tell me what you think. Do any of these books stand out to you? Have you read any of these books and loved them? Just tell me your thoughts because I would love to have that interaction with you guys. Thanks so, so much for watching. I genuinely mean that from the bottom of my heart and I will see you in my next video. Bye.